Hey viewers, I'm Lee Nathaniel. Welcome to my vlog. Not too long ago, a person went for several of my videos and left very mean comments and then shared them to his circles and other social networks. I've had my blog now for three years. But I understand that I post my videos publicly. So I have to expect a long wall of the occasional good comments and feedback. Sometimes I'll get a very negative comments as well. This is a chance I take viewers. Because I'm too young to have social media accounts, all of mine, including YouTube, is ran by my parents. We work together on my posts, and, and they moder moderate the accounts. I'm not even allowed to accept my friend invites on Facebook without permission. They have all the passwords. Over the last three years, I've gotten simply hundreds of inappropriate comments on my blog posts, mostly spam, and comments containing links to questionable websites. And these comments, though, were a little bit different because I actually know the person who left them. It is easy for me to move on from this, knowing that I did not do anything to revoke this person, and that I p do put myself out there for people who leave all kinds of comments. Although, I know that my parents are on top of anything serious that might come up. But in the news, every week, there are stories of kids, a lot of them my age, who deal with comments like this. And worse, from people that they both know in real life and online. And it makes me sad to see how often these things can lead to tragic endings. I want to know what I can do about it, what all of us can do. Recently, I spoke of Officer Jeff Hedkey at the Crown Police Department, and he, he gave me some really good insight of how to deal with loneliness. Good morning, Officer Hedkey. Good morning, Leah. How are you? Good. Thank you for meeting with me today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Could you um explain like to my viewers a, b a bit about who you are and your job as a gang intervention officer? Sure. Um, uh, I'm a gang intervention officer with the Corona Police Department. Uh, it's a new position. Um, what I do is I talk to and I deal with young people, uh, usually in the intermediate school age, who are on the ri or at risk or on the verge of maybe joining a gang or engaging at risk behaviors. Um, we found out a long time ago that you know, a lot of kids need some support and some direction, and it's tough for them to get that sometimes. So my job is to educate them, teach them, provide them some support and mentoring so that if they're encountering a difficult situation, they can make good decisions and become successful, productive adults and young people. That's really, it sounds like you have a really important job to do in the community. I like to think so. I, I really enjoy it. I in, teach in a lot of the schools in the school district, and I get to do a lot of things that normal police officers don't get to do. So it's a whole lot of fun, and the young people are really cool to work with. That is really cool how you just stop the community from like getting on the verge of joining a gang or something. Well, that's our goal. I mean, nothing's 100%, but even if we can help a couple of kids not join a gang or not commit crimes or bully people, then we've been successful. Um, you know, could you start by explaining the difference between bullying and just plain bad or mean behavior? There's a lot of definitions to bullying, um, but I kind of have my own in what the difference is. In my opinion, bullying is something somebody does on purpose to either hurt somebody else, usually emotionally, and to make them feel, feel better. Um, bad behavior isn't often designed to hurt other people. You can misbehave or do something wrong, but the intention isn't to hurt the other person. But if you bully somebody, usually that involves saying something or doing something that hurts the other person or makes the other person feel bad. So it's more something on purpose as opposed to just being a mean person or doing something bad. That's really interesting. So, um, you know, that's a lot of, I deal with a lot of young people who do things that they shouldn't do. That doesn't make them a bad person, you know. But when somebody does it on purpose, then I have to maybe look at them a little differently and say, okay, you need some help here, you know, as opposed to just not knowing the difference between right and wrong. told to just try and get along and more ignore hurtful behaviors and that's mostly good advice. How does a person know when to ask for help without 
sound like a tattletale. Well, of course, you should always ask for help if you feel that you're in danger. You know, sometimes bullying involves threats. Maybe somebody threatens to hurt you or do something hurtful to somebody else. And you should always tell an adult if you feel threatened or you think somebody else might be in danger. That's a given. But also, there might be a point where you don't know how to handle it. You're stuck. And when you get stuck, there's, what do we do? We ask for help. Even me, when I get stuck, I ask for help. So if you feel threatened, or if you're stuck and you don't know how to handle it and it's not getting any better, ask for help. That's the best way to do it. And there's no responsible young person or adult who's going to think you're a tattletale if you're just asking for help. Because that's what we do. We ask for help when we, we get stuck. That is really an amazing advice. So, but also, like you said, ignoring it is actually a really good way to deal with it. You know, that's what I would usually tell people. Because what do bullies want? They want a reaction. They bully you because they want you to get angry, or they want you to become upset, or they want to make you sad. And when you react, when you become sad, or upset, or angry, then they feel powerful. So they keep doing it because that's how they feel powerful. But if you are strong and you don't get sad, or upset, or hurt, then they kind of go, wow, it's not working. I don't feel powerful now. And they might just stop. So your advice to ignore it is really good too. Thank you. How can, say, young people avoid bullies? Well, um, I know we're going to talk a little bit about cyberbullying, but one of the best ways to avoid cyberbullying is to never post anything that you wouldn't want made public. Keep all your passwords safe and secure. Uh, don't go onto websites and things that are not appropriate. But in, in person, it can be difficult to avoid, to avoid bullying because bullies will often look for you. So it's really difficult. A lot of people who get bullied feel they did something wrong. And they don't. They don't do anything wrong. It's not their fault. The bullies look for somebody that they think are weaker than them. And often that's not the case because a bully might be strong physically, but if they see somebody who maybe isn't as big or as tough as them, but maybe that person's really smart. Or maybe that person's really good at music or you know something else. Well, they're not weaker, they're just different. You know? So it can be difficult to avoid bullying because bullies will look for those people who are different because they think they're better, but they're really not. They're just different. And that's what bullies don't get sometimes. You know, we can all be different, but that doesn't mean one person's better than another. So my advice is be yourself. Don't pretend to be something you're not. And if you just be yourself and you're honest, that's all we can do. And if we get bullied, we'll address the bullying. But don't try and be somebody you're not. Don't lie and don't pretend. Because that's not being honest to yourself. But you're right about how people would be different. I mean, just like imagine every single person on the planet is the same. That would be boring. It would be very boring. So I'm kind of glad we're all a little different. It makes things exciting, doesn't it? Yeah. So. How can a person respond to bullying without being seen as an aggressor? Well, what I tell young people, if they're comfortable with it, if they get bullied, be confident. You know, stand up straight, look the person in the eye and say, you're bullying me, stop it, I do not appreciate it. You're a bully. Say it in a way that is not aggressive. Say it in a way that is not threatening. But say it in a way that's confident. Let the person know that you don't appreciate it, you don't want to be bullied, and that you're not going to accept it. So, a lot of bullies, they don't expect to be confronted. They think you're weak just because you're different. So if you stand up and you have a confident presence and you tell them right to their eyes, stop bullying me. I do not like it, and I do not appreciate it. Knock it off. They might just stop. Is that a guarantee? Um, 
I don't think so. I don't think so either. So another way is to just go along with it because what did we say earlier? The the goal of a bully is to get a Re reaction. Reaction, exactly. Well, let's pretend that somebody didn't like your shirt, and they say, "Oh man, that shirt is so horrible." You know, it, it, you know, I would never wear that shirt. Yeah, that's a nerd shirt. Well, you know what you could say? You could say, "You're right. It is." You know what? Shame on me for wearing something like this. Or if they said, Officer Headkey, you're going bald. What's that? You're losing your hair. They're making fun of me. I could say, yep, you're right. I'm, I'm losing my hair. I'm going gray, too. So you kind of go with it. Is that the kind of a reaction a bully expects, do you think? I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't think so. Did they get the reaction they wanted? Did they make you sad? No. Did they make you angry? No. Did they make you upset? No, that's not what they wanted. Then they'd be like, oh my gosh, my bullying didn't work. You're taking what he says and turning it against him. But you're not being mean, you're not being aggressive, you're not being threatening. So what are they going to say when they say, that's a horrible shirt, and you say, yep, it is. What is the bully going to say? You just agreed with him. Uh, <laughs> he might be stuck, huh? So, if you're confident and you feel safe, tell them, don't bully me anymore. Or, use what they said against them. Agree with them. Joke with them about it. But if none of those things work, what can we always do? Oh, tell please. somebody. Yeah, tell a responsible adult to try and help us. That is amazing advice. I mean, I've never really heard of it. Advice like that before. That's, bullying. that's what I've done before. Because you think I've been bullied? Yeah. Of course, yeah. I think a lot of us have. So it's something that takes place a lot, even though we may not see it all the time. You're totally right. What kind of things should we do when we think someone else is being bullied? Well, actually, there's a lot of things you can do. If you know the person, maybe you can just talk to them and give them some support. Um, I know that if I was bullied, if I had somebody who was witnessing that, and they came up to me and said, Hey, I'm going to use my name, Jeff. Call me Jeff. Jeff, you okay? I noticed that something was going on. You know, just sometimes that support can be helpful. That reassurance that you didn't do anything wrong. It's the bully's fault. It's not your fault. Okay? Tell that person, hey, you know, uh, if you can't deal with the bullying on your own, go tell your teacher or your counselor or your parents. You know, give them some advice on what they can do, but just make sure we don't tell them to do something that's going to get them hurt. You know, don't tell them, go fight that guy, because that's horrible. You, you know, why do you want to get in a fight? You're just going to get in trouble and maybe get hurt, right? You know, or maybe if you don't know that person, go tell a responsible adult. Hey, Mrs. Smith, I saw Jeff over here getting bullied, but I don't think he's confident enough to tell you about it or he's embarrassed by it. Can you go talk to him and see if you can help? So maybe give that person some support or tell a responsible adult that can maybe help that person. That'd be two ways that you could help somebody you see is getting bullied. I see. What steps can parents and educators take to protect their children? I often notice that they have no idea that anything's been happening. Well, first, they need to be involved in their kids' lives. Talk to them. When they come home from school, hopefully that they ask their, their kids, what did you do in school today? How was class? How were your teachers? Get to know their friends. You know, a lot of parents don't know who their kids' friends are. You know, you'll talk to the parents and say, hi, who is Leon's best friend? And the parent might say, you know, I, I don't know. Or they might know, oh, his best friend is Steve. Oh, wonderful. What's Steve's last name? I don't know. Where does Steve live? Oh, I don't know. So number one, be involved in your child's life and know what they're doing. That way, if there is a problem, hopefully you can recognize it. Number two, talk to them about bullying. Okay? Lots of kids get bullied. It might be once, it might be over a long period of time. But talk to them about it so that if they are bullied, they know how to respond in the proper way without getting themselves in trouble or without getting themselves hurt. Okay? So communication is great. Um, 
The other thing is if they see their kids are being bullied, take some action. You know, contact the school, you know, the administrators, the counselors, the principals, and ask for assistance. Okay? Also, if your child goes online, or has a smartphone, or uses social media, monitor what they do, monitor what websites they go on, monitor what they post, okay? and limit their access if you need to. Okay? Because a lot of kids don't understand the possible dangers of social media and posting things out there. Um, they just don't think about it sometimes, so be involved and monitor that stuff too. That, I see that how you have to monitor every time you almost because somebody could be out there and they could just, you know, post a mean comment, like. Very much so. It seems from my research that kids are greatly affected when by bullying behavior is continued online, social media. Is there a difference between bullying and just cyberbullying? The difference is how the bullying occurs. Bullying is bullying, okay? But cyberbullying is bullying via an electronic means. It could be text messages, it could be posts on social media, it could be emails, um, all kinds of things, but it's through electronic means, not face-to-face. So that's, that's different, but it accomplishes the same thing. Bullies are saying things or posting things to make somebody else feel bad, feel embarrassed, hurt, all those things. So the end result is the same, and the goal of the bully is the same, it's just how they do it is different. Electronic versus face-to-face -face or spreading rumors through other people. Yeah. If someone finds themselves a victim of cyberbullying, what steps should they take regarding comments left on social media or sent on via email or text? Well, usually a good first step is don't respond in a negative way to any posts on social media. That just creates a dialogue back and forth that can escalate. You know, if somebody said to me, Officer Hedke, that's a really ugly maroon shirt. And I said to them, well, that's a really ugly blue shirt. Is that going to solve the problem? No, it will probably make the problem get worse. It's like fighting fire or fire. Exactly right. So number one, if somebody posts something that is mean, if you respond in a mean way, it's going to probably make the situation worse. It'll escalate. So try and ignore it, or if you feel the need to respond, kind of like what we did earlier, respond in a joking way. If somebody posts on, Officer Hedke wore the ugliest shirt today to school, how could he, you know, I hope, you know, he should be so embarrassed. If I felt the need I had to post, I'd say, you're right, that was a really ugly shirt. What was I thinking this morning, you know? So, number one, try and ignore the posts. If you have to respond, do it in a way that's going to, de-escalate or make the situation um, not as bad. That, that's one of the first things. Um, secondly, um, know who your friends are and make sure you have, like on Facebook and some of those other posts, that you have all your security settings in there. You know, you don't want strangers looking at what you put on or other people being able to post if they're not your, your friends who you trust. Okay. Also, if something's posted that is threatening or that makes you feel really uncomfortable, tell a responsible adult. Okay? Sometimes as young people we can't handle a difficult situation just because we don't know how. We just don't have the experience. So once again, ask for help. A responsible adult, whether it's a parent or a teacher or a police officer, can often give you other suggestions or solutions or get involved and help with negative posts either by getting them removed or by addressing or talking to the person who put them on there. I see. And also, there's another difference. I mean, like, normal bullying, like, you go to a different school and the bully's gone, but cyberbullying, I mean, they're all, you can never escape from them, pretty much. Pretty much. That's why, and I'm not super technical savvy, but if you have all your filters and security measures in place, hopefully it will reduce it. But cyberbullying is very difficult because it can continue even if the person who's doing the bullying isn't around you. You're exactly right there. 
Also, it can occur 24 hours a day. And the other thing about cyberbullying that makes it really bad is sometimes it's anonymous. We don't know who's doing it. And it can take a lot of expertise and a lot of work to find out who's posting things if we don't know who it is at the beginning. So cyberbullies tend to be very aggressive because they feel like, oh, I'm anonymous. They don't know who I am because I'm sitting back here behind my computer. They don't know what I look like. Um, so that is another problem. Um, so cyberbullying presents very unique challenges, um, both to the, the victim and to people like me who, if it becomes threatening, we have to investigate it. I see. That's ironic. Um, my next question is, when is there a point when the police should be involved? Um, definitely if there's a threat made. Threatening to hurt somebody is a crime. People can be arrested for just threatening to hurt somebody. So definitely if there's a threat, or even if a threat's not made, if somebody feels threatened or uncomfortable, they can always contact the police. That's not does, doesn't mean that a crime has been committed automatically, but still the police can address things. Um, sometimes if a kid is one person is bullying another, if a police officer in their uniform talks to that person, that might just be enough sometimes. You know, um, they might go, oh my gosh, police officer talked to me. I don't want to get in really bad trouble. So they might stop. But definitely if a threat is made, because that is a crime. And you can be arrested for threatening to hurt somebody, fight them, punch them, kick them, you know, things like that. So you can be arrested by like saying, like, I'm going to kill you. Yes, definitely. You can be arrested for that. And I have arrested lots of people for saying things just like that. Does that mean we'll arrest everybody who says something like that? No, but we, we, that is an option we have. Because as a police officer, my goal isn't to go out and just arrest people. My goal is to solve the problem. Arresting somebody is just one way to solve the problem. Sometimes I can just talk to somebody. That might solve the problem. Sometimes I would have to arrest them. That might solve the problem. Every problem, every case of bullying is different. So we can't say automatically, this is what we're going to do, because everything's different. Just like people are all different, bullying situations are all different. So we have to be open-minded, address the specific problem, and then come up with a specific solution. Thank you so much for talking with us today. No, thank you for having me, Leanne. It's been a pleasure. Me too. Thank you, Officer Hitchie, for spending time with me. Member viewers, Facebook, YouTube, and other social networks all have privacy controls in place to help you avoid cyberbullying. Go to the URL on screen or check your YouTube settings to get more information. Websites like education.com and stopbullying.gov have great resources on protecting against bullying. To stay safe, Use your privacy controls. Remember, anything you post online is online forever and everywhere. So don't post anything you wouldn't share with your grandmother and never feed the trolls. According to boystatistics.org, half of American teens have been a victim of cyberbullying. And 75% of teens have been a victim of some kind of bullying behavior. But only 1 in 10 will ever tell their parents about it. So if you've been a victim, well, you should definitely speak up. The most important tool to stop bullying of every kind is us. If we have the confidence to be ourselves and stand up for ourselves, 